Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Courtney. Today is the first mystery box of 2024. If you are new to this challenge, here is the quick rundown. There are a group of YouTubers that get together. We are each given the name of another YouTuber and we send them a box of goodies. This theme is anything goes, which means anything in the box can come from wherever. Dollar Tree, the thrift store, their stash, it doesn't matter. Inside there are also two wrapped challenge items. These are items that we absolutely have to use and that are a little tricky to DIY with and then there is a twist there's a kind of a special twist this time because each sender got to pick the twist for their participant so I sent my box over to Christina Elizabeth and I got my box from Jamie the crafty DIY guy I'm gonna open this up and let's see what Jamie sent me I have opened the box there is a card on top it says Courtney let's open this up I love to save these I missed the trash can, but that's okay. Um, I have a whole bulletin board of these. All right. Hey, Courtney, remember we are friends despite the contents of this box. You're such a great friend to me, but also an inspiration. Thank you so much for being you. Love ya. By the way, my option for you is an unfinished DIY, Jamie. Okay, so that is my twist. Um, and I'll explain that in a minute because there were like a couple options, but we'll get into that in a second. So let's see what he sent me. All right, first thing up. Oh, this is cute. A little bumblebee a bucket very good oh man okay flamingo <laughs> light up necklace interesting okay yeah hmm I don't really know what to say to that Jamie thank you uh okay wooden beads redeemed yourself with wooden beads can't go wrong with wooden beads Little uh, bunny butt. That's cute. Perfect for spring DIYs. Oh, this is cute. My Dollar Tree has never gotten these little lanterns. This little LED white lantern. All right, I see the challenge items. Put those aside. Hold on. A little sign that says being happy never goes out of style. That's actually really cute. It's like metal with a wood frame. So that's a great base for a DIY. Oh, love these wood slices. Very nice. Love that. Okay. <laughs> it's a seasonal. I guess he thought maybe I want to do St. Patrick's. Okay. A little uh, shamrock. <laughs> Glitter, my favorite. <sighs> okay. Oh, Jamie. Oh, Jamie, come on. What? What are you doing to me, man? What the heck is this? A glitter canvas, everybody. Those who know me know that I do not like glitter. <laughs> Okay, Jamie, this is, this is challenging to say the least. All right, what do we got? Oh, this is cute. A little blank. Jamie, you have the best Dollar Tree. It's a little wooden bead thing with a little, was that a hexagon? Yeah, hexagon six sides. <laughs> I'm math real good. Okay. Oh, this is nice. A little wooden. Okay, you've sent me some really good blanks. So this is good stuff. Wooden blank here. I can work with that. Oh, these are cute. A carrot and rabbit garland. This is actually a carrot and rabbit garland. This is actually cute by itself. It's got um, like gingham print on each one. That's super cute. Hmm. Okay, there's some really good stuff in here. Oh my gosh, there's so much stuff. Okay. All right, this is a good good blank as well. Love that. I think I have one of those in my stash somewhere that I haven't done anything with. A brown house. Okay, very good. Very good blanks, Jamie. You did do good with that. I will say, oh, this is cute too. Happiness is homemade. So a little picket fence. Okay. Oh my gosh, a calendar. Oh, this is actually super cute. My Dollar Tree never has calendars, ever. I mean, they have the ones like at the end of the year with like the cats and the dogs, but uh, this one's actually really cute. It's got, I don't know if y'all can see that. Is that focused? I hope so. Lots of different pictures on there. So yeah. Wow, that's really good. Like I'll be able to use this all year. And one of the little coin boxes, Dollar Tree. All right, so I'll start with the twist. So the twist, um, I gave three options, okay? And each person who sent their box to somebody, they got to pick what options. So one option was they had to work a water bottle and one of the challenge items together. Another twist option was they had to do a DIY that had wood, metal, and plastic in it. And then the third option was to send one of your unfinished DIYs and that person needs to try to finish it. So 
it says, come on, baby, let's do the twist. So this must be Jamie's unfinished project. Oh boy. <laughs> okay. This was unfinished. What else were you going to do? That's so cute. Oh, okay. I see. He painted at the top. All right. So it looks like it was one of the wood planks. And he started at the top with a little be kind kind of stencil thing on my bobber. All right, so the trick here will be, should I try to like finish his vision or should I totally do something else? Hmm, I'll think of that. All right, we're down to the two challenge items. I'm always nervous about these challenge items. Jamie, you better have been nice to me, man. Oh my gosh, what? What is this, Jamie? Okay, not terrible. It's a little two pack of leopard silky, who's so fancy, uh, zipper bags. That's not terrible. Like I'm not traumatized by this. Okay. All right, item number two, here we go. All right. It's a squishy one. It's squishy. This is cute wrapping paper, Jamie. Very cute. Okay. It's a shower curtain, everybody. Um, I didn't even know Dollar Tree sold shower curtains. Uh, it's kind of a nautical-y type print with some greens and blues and the shower curtain. Can I use this to protect my work surface? Does that count? Shower curtain, what the heck? Okay. For this DIY, I'll be using one of the sign bases, this one right here, and the rabbit and carrot garland. I started by taking some white paint and I painted it on the brown portion of the sign just to get a whole distressed look. Once that was done, I grabbed the garland and I wasn't quite sure what part of this I wanted to use. So I played around with it for a little while and decided, okay, I'm gonna use the three bunnies cause there was an orange, a pink and a purple bunny in there. And I hot glued those down directly to the sign. Then I took some of these stickers that I got from Hobby Lobby quite a while ago. They were uh, pink Chevron little stickers and I pulled all the letters to say happy Easter but I'm actually gonna end up changing this in just a minute. Now, each of my bunnies needed a little something added to it, so I just grabbed some of this white ribbon that I had and tied little bows, hot glued those directly to each of the bunnies. Then taking some green moss that came from Dollar Tree, I hot glued that along the bottom as well and just put it around kind of the bunny's paws, not trying to cover up the whole bottom of the bunny, but just kind of filling in all those little gaps on the bottom. To finish this little sign off, I grabbed this little wooden tray. I actually got this last year. There's a couple of Dollar Tree ones, these big eggs on top, but the rest of these little embellishments came from Hobby Lobby last year. And I decided, okay, I need to add some of these into this sign. So what I ended up ultimately doing here was I took the Happy Easter wooden ones and I hot glued that to the purple bunny. So that's why those Happy Easter sticker ended up coming off. And then I decided on the carrots. And of course I just painted those orange and green and then hot glued those down. And then this sign, was ready to be hung up with your spring decor. So this project will end up being a five minute Dollar Tree DIY. So for this one, I'll be using the calendar and the wood blank sign. And I started by opening up the calendar and trying to decide, okay, what did I wanna use in this? So I pulled out a couple because there were actually a lot of good options. In the end, I decided to go with the carrot picture. To get it sized down, I did measure it and was gonna trim it, but I ended up just kind of doing it the other way where you stick the photo down and kind of crease it. And then I use my Fisker's paper cutter and cut it off. Anything you see in today's video, I will always link it down below in the description box in case you have questions about any of my tools and gadgets. And so once I got it sized correctly, I just grabbed a glue stick and I put that all over my little sign base, stuck down my carrot picture. And then the last step, I just wanted to add a little something extra. So I took some of these green colored beads that also came from Dollar Tree that I had in my stash and added a couple to the top of the twine. And then that's it. This sign is also now ready to go. 
begins to shine again. Taking all the advice there is, and none of it has helped. Experience has made me realize that I won't build my life on empty. Now, this project, I actually kind of liked the whole little treat yourself piggy bank. I thought, well, that's a great thing to have, throw your change in and then go treat yourself. So I'm actually just going to make this a little more bougie. So I took the back of it off and used that as a template to trace onto this glitter canvas. Using my hobby knife, I was actually really easily able to just trim this and cut it with it and then kind of snap it and get it to be the right size for the back of this little piggy bank. The only other thing I wanted to do to this was to add some lights inside so that that glitter would really sparkle. So I took some fairy lights and just used some black electrical tape to secure it around the inside of the box. Popped on the back and now I've got this cute little container that I can just fill up with some money and then treat myself. This is going to turn into a sweet, pun intended, you'll see what I mean in a minute, a spring DIY. I started by using the house that Jamie sent me and I'll be using the wood slices in this one. To get started, I took the house and traced it out on a piece of this floral fabric that I got from Hobby Lobby. I used some fabric Mod Podge to get that attached. Once that was done, I grabbed some of these wooden sticks that I had in my stash. They came from Dollar Tree, they're new this year. And one of these little wooden planks also from Dollar Tree. And I wanted enough sticks based Basically to kind of uh, I'm making like a little container so three of the sides are gonna have these wood sticks attached to it once I got out and figured out how many sticks I needed I took three tumbling tower blocks and I hot glued those to the edge of the wood plank and then secured my house to those so that way I knew my house would be on there nice and sturdy now it was time to get my wooden sticks secured together so to do that I took some popsicle sticks that I trimmed down used some hot glue and just kind of stuck it in the middle across all of the sticks for all three of the sides when those were all secure, I was ready to attach these to that wooden plank. So I just took some hot glue and I ran it along the bottom of the wood plank, kind of stuck the side on there and again did it for all three sides. To give it a little extra security, I went onto the inside of this little fenced container looking thing and used some tumbling towers blocks to attach to the wood sticks along with the base of the wood plank. <laughs> Hopefully that's not too confusing. Now, once that was done, I said, okay, I've got to use these wood slices. So it was kind of an afterthought, but I ended up just running them along the roof line to a get the pieces worked in so I used them but B I just felt like it could use a little wood element on top as well the final step was just to take some of this little greenery that I had I made a little wreath attached a little bow and stuck that on there and then now this is going to be a cute little container that can hold some springtime treats you could put it if you work in your office you could put it in your kitchen you could give it to a teacher you could give it to the front staff at your kids school what have you but you can fill it with some really fun springtime candies I'll be using the Happiness is Homemade as the base of my next DIY. I started by taking off the twine and then originally I was going to try to use the front of this. Um, I took the pig off and of course it ruined it. There's paper there so it made it all rough and yucky and then I realized okay I'm just going to use the back of this. So I pulled off the pig and I pulled off the little Happiness portion of the sign and is homemade pulled that off flipped it over to the back and then I still wanted it to have a wood look so I took my hobby knife and went ahead and cut all the way down to make it look like it was slatted wood then grabbed some white paint and gave it a coat of paint now I'd also painted over the one of the little the one that said happiness it doesn't matter which one with pink paint but then I realized okay this one takes several coats and again it has that paper topping and the back of it was messed up so I was like you know what I'm going to cover it with some of this really fun spring scrapbook paper that I got from Hobby Lobby so that's what I did I just traced around it cut it out and attached it to this little portion of the sign.
Now this DIY is actually using a lot of items from the box. It's using the little bunny butt, the beads, the shamrock, and those flamingo lights. I went ahead and broke down the flamingo lights. I was really hoping the light in those was white, but it's red. So I'm going to tell you in a minute when I get to this portion of using these, um, how my idea shifted, but I didn't need the flamingo part. So I discarded that. And then it was time to grab the glittery shamrock. And what I decided is I was going to turn this into a carrot. So so I needed one of the leaves and the stem of the clover, but it was really, really thick. So I cut it in half with my hobby knife. So how am I going to make this look like a carrot? Well, I'm going to cover it in fabric because let's be honest, nobody wants to paint over glitters, especially glitter on styrofoam. I don't even know if that's even, no, we just don't want to do that. So to do that, I'm going to take some of this orange fabric. It came from Dollar Tree in the Crafter Square section, and I'm going to cover this little clover part, uh, not well, yeah, it's the clover leaf with the fabric. I did end up kind of wadding up a little bit of fabric in that open space so that it wasn't. I don't know. I don't know if it's necessary. If you have fluff, you could put some fluff in there too. Um, but I just used hot glue to get it nice and secure. Did the same thing for the little stem part of the carrot. I used this green polka dot fabric. Now that came from Hobby Lobby. It's some I had in my stash. Again, secured it with some hot glue and I glued this down to kind of the bottom portion of the sign. So what it's going to look like is just the top of the carrot poking out from the ground. After the carrot was down, all I added was I hot glued the little bunny butt and a little bit of just Dollar Tree moss to the bottom. To work the beads in, I just attached those to the twine hanger that was already part of this sign. And then it was time to figure out about these lights. The whole thing with them being red kind of threw me for a loop. I like that that was a pink strand. That was kind of nice. But um, I was just going to make this kind of fun, festive little light up sign. But with it being red, this turned into a bunny warning system uh, sign for Farmer Joe's prized carrots. So that's how this sign kind of turned. It's to try to, I don't know, keep bunnies away. So I started with these little plant picks. Now you could grab some stickers or a cricket for this part, but I'm just using my good old fashioned handwriting and writing keep out on one of them. And then on the other one with the Sharpie marker, I'm writing no rabbits. I also wanted to make a little first prize ribbon for the carrot. So I took a piece of white cardstock and then I'm just using this little wood round because it was on my table and some of my, these are my pinking shears and cutting out the circle. I ended up having to make the circle a little bit smaller because it was a little too big. And then I had this little blue and white striped ribbon and I hot glued that to the back of it. And then again, using my good old fashioned handwriting, I wrote first prize and hot glued that down to the carrot. Now this little piece right here that has the scrapbook paper on it, you could add words to this if you wanted to, instead of doing the little keep out no rabbit sign, you could put it on this instead. You could put, you know, no, I don't know, rabbit warning system, whatever you want to call it. Um, but I got that hot glue down and then to get these little lights in place, I did just use a little bit of hot glue and hope that it wouldn't melt the wires. <laughs> and I tacked those down and then on the back side just kind of secured the little battery pack to the back and that was it this sign was finished looking back on how I used to be I always thought the love was made for me oh well I was just as blue right as the sky on to the challenge items. So I'll be using this little being happy never goes out of style sign and then those very fancy cosmetic bags. I decided to just treat that as fabric. So with the larger bag, I cut it um, along each of the sides to kind of open it up. And then I measured the inside of this little picture. And then I was able to cut this with my Fiskars paper cutter. Like it cut it beautifully. And so I cut it down to the right size that way. I needed to press this fabric because there was a little bit of a crease in there. So I'm just using my Cricut mini press to get that done. I also pulled out some metal letters that I had in my stash. These came from Dollar Tree, the ones that were like one pack had A through L and then another pack had N through Z. So I had a bunch of those and I pulled out the letters to spell the word create. So this is like a DIYers little decor piece. To get the little fabric attached to my sign, I'm just using some Mod Podge. And then once that was attached, I wanted my letters to have a little bit of a 3D element. So I used some of the foam sticky tape and just cut down teeny tiny little pieces of it and stuck it on the back of the letters, stuck the letters down, and then this was finished and ready to be displayed in any craft room. Be, loving you has made me realize I 
So now I'm working on the twist. Jamie sent me one of his unfinished projects. Now, <laughs> this was kind of painful for me to like paint over his work, but I'm gonna keep with the whole be kind theme that he was going for. It's just gonna be my twist. I did paint over it white because I thought it was going one direction and then I realized, no, I actually wanna put scrap of paper on this. So I just took some scrap of paper from Hobby Lobby, measured around it and attached it to the wood plank with some Mod Podge. If you've been with me for a while, you know I like to do 3D elements and I decided my B needed to be 3D off of my sign. Um, I've got all my Easter stuff spread out everywhere and I was staring at these Easter eggs and I'm like, you know what? I can turn those into a B. So I'm using one of the golden eggs um, from Dollar Tree several years ago. One of my kids is just not gonna get one. Sorry, I guess it'll be my least favorite kid who doesn't get their golden egg. I'm gonna use that for the body and then the bottom portion of their large eggs from Dollar Tree for the head. Then on the little bee bucket that Jamie sent me, I ripped off the head <laughs> and I'm going to be using the antennae um, off that. And then I also removed the wings from that, took all this stuff outside, not the antenna because they were already black. I spray painted the bee head and the bee body black and then the wings I spray painted white. So in Jamie's original project, he had the word be kind, be spelled B-E-E -E, on his project. So I decided, okay, my project's going to have that as well. I'm just using some of these stickers. This pack came from Hobby Lobby and y'all, I've been working on this pack for years. Absolutely love it. So I pulled out all the letters to spell the words be kind. On that little bee head that I ripped off the bucket, I cut the antenna with my tin snips and then the little um, portion that I'm using for a head, you know, the Easter eggs always have those two little holes in the bottom, which was perfect. So I stuck the antenna in there and just used a lot of hot glue to kind of secure those in place. You can't have a bee without some realistic looking wings. So I took the little metal wings that I cut off the bucket and placed them on a piece of vellum and traced around it, cut those out, and then hot glued that to the top of the white wings to make it, well, look more realistic. I painted some yellow stripes around the body of the bee. Now it was time to get these pieces glued down because it was such, there's like no surface area on these pieces and I didn't want glue oozing out if I tried to glue the head down and the body. So I ended up taking some tumbling tower blocks that I trimmed down with my miter shears and attaching those to the inside pieces of these eggs. Then that gave me a bunch more surface area and I put the hot glue on the tumbling tower blocks and was able to secure these really well down to my sign. The next step was to glue down my wings. So I just used some hot glue and got that attached. Then taking some of that uh, twine that Jamie had used to wrap my challenge gifts, I decided I wanted to wrap that at the top. So I rearranged the words be kind and wrapped that twine, tied a little bow and glued that down. And then when I was looking at it, I felt like it needed something a little bit more. So I found these little floral felt coasters at Dollar Tree and I decided just to kind of cut them up and place them on the sign using some hot glue and then this thing was ready to go. We are down to the last three items from my box that is the lantern, the hexagon beaded thingamabobber and the shower curtain. Um, I saw these items and I, I was like, okay, this is going to be a whole nautical theme DIY. Now, all I can say for this is, um, I, I think I just lost my mind. I always have that one project in every mystery box and guess what? This is it. Um, I, I can't say that I'm proud of myself for doing this. I, I honestly don't know what I was thinking. Um, there's actually no real audio for this one either. I, I think I was just so shocked that I was actually doing this that I actually had nothing to say. Uh, so what did I do? Well, I decided that it would be a great idea to take the shower curtain and to melt it onto the beads so that the beads would become colored because you know, that makes a lot of sense. There's probably a million reasons why you should not do this. So I've gone right now. Here's my disclaimer. Do not do this at home. Okay. Um, but you know, I did it. So I took the plastic, cut it into pieces. I decided I'm going to do the blue and the green and I proceeded to just melt it. Now it actually did adhere to the beads. Um, it was a little rusticy looking and I'm sure if you were like an expert plastic melter, you could probably make it look a lot better than I did. But again, I really don't encourage you to do this. 
Um, so I decided after two blue beads and one green that that was enough for me. And then I used some white beads for the rest of it. And because I hadn't had enough of the shower curtain, I was like, okay, I'm gonna use more of it. So I took a little section of the green, white, and green stripe, trimmed it down and said, okay, I'm gonna put this on this little tile for a little accent piece. And I was like, here, let me use my heat gun because you know, I was on a roll. And then I was like, Courtney, what are you doing? You look like an idiot, that's not gonna work. And so I just used a glue stick to attach another little piece of the shower curtain to the hexagon. To finish off this little lantern, I had some of these wooden turtles that came from Dollar Tree last year. And I had this one that I'd painted and thought maybe this one, but then I ended up gluing down a just natural color turtle, took a piece of twine, strung up my beads and attached this little, I don't know, turtle medallion with beads as the handle on the top. I took off the silver part and then that's it. I left it like this. And yeah, I would say that this one is probably not my most favorite project out of all of the ones I've done, but you'll have to let me know what you think. This wraps up the first mystery box of 2023. I am so excited for this year. I've got some fun new things I'll be throwing into these mystery boxes. Let me know down below which one of these projects turned out to be your favorite. I also love to know what you guys would have made with the challenge items. Let me know down in the comments because I love to read that. Thanks so much for watching guys. I really do appreciate it. Make sure you check out the playlist down below to watch all of these boxes in order and all the fun. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Start to try. Even when the sun